from the Thebaid of Egypt and the deserts of Palestine and Syria to the caves and cells of Mount Athos and even beyond to the vast forests of northern Russia. These are the Chronicles of the Desert. Our neighbor is our life. If we gain our neighbor, we have gained Christ. But if we offend our neighbor, we have offended Christ, said St. Anthony the Great. And yet, far too often, we not only fail to gain our neighbor, we fail to even see them for who they truly are, due to the passions which blind the eyes of our soul. Such as what occurred to one of Abba Anthony's disciples, Makarios, one day early in his life when he lived in a cell beside a neighboring village. Abba Makarios was known as the spirit bearer, and yet even so, his ways were strange to men, for he followed not the fashion of this world, but the spirit of God. Now it happened one day, through the trickery of the evil one, that a single young woman fell into temptation and became pregnant. Who did this to you? asked her father. I cannot tell, replied the young woman as she covered her face in shame. But her father would not give up. Who did this? You must tell me! Finally, the young woman, in an effort to protect her true lover, cried out, It was the anchorite! He is the father! The anchorite! replied her stunned father. We'll take care of him! And so, her father gathered a group of villagers and told them all that had occurred because of the anchorite. They stormed Abba Makarios's cell, dragged him to the village, marched him up and down the main street, and pelted him with curses and dirt. This monk has defiled our maiden! Catch him! Catch him! They beat Makarios with sticks. They struck him with stones. They knocked him to the ground over and over, until he couldn't get back up again, and was near death. Just then, another elder appeared and said, What are you doing? The crowd paused at these words, and the elder continued, How long will you go on beating this strange monk? He defiled this young woman, elder, said one of the villagers, and here is his disciple, replied another as they pointed to a young man who attempted to help Makarios up on his feet. How can you help this man for whom you served? asked a villager to the young man. Just look at what he's done. The elder again spoke. Leave him be. We shall not let him go, replied the young woman's father, until he has given us a pledge that he will keep her. Makarios, battered and bruised, had not said a single word in his defense not against the false charges, nor during the beating. But now, he agreed to what was said and spoke to his disciple. Go, said the wounded Makarios, and sell all the baskets we have in our cell, and then give my new wife something to eat. Makarios, he said to himself as he gathered courage, you have found yourself a wife. Therefore, you must work a little more in order to feed her. Like Christ, Makarios sought not to justify or defend himself against false accusations, nor to speak in a manner that disparaged the young woman. Rather, he worked harder and harder each day in order to support her. But months later, the young woman went into labor 
After the first day had passed, her worried parents wondered, What is going on? Why is she still in labor? Another day passed by and the young woman cried out in pain, but she still did not give birth. After several more days, the young woman was exhausted by her prolonged labor. She cried out to her parents, I know why this is happening, she said. It is because I slandered the anchorite and lied about him, but he's not responsible for my pregnancy. How can this be? replied her father. It's a man from the neighboring village. I did not want you to know and so I lied, replied the young woman. Just then, as she revealed to her parents the name of her true lover, she began giving birth to the child. News about this spread around the village quickly, and many were in awe at the humility of Makarios, who bore their slander without response. A crowd visited his cell in order to do penance before him, and yet, when they opened his cell, he was no longer there. For Makarios had fled into the desert, seeking to avoid the praise of men and escape the trap of vainglory. And yet, was it not also out of love for neighbor? For Makarios, being hidden even while seen, had borne the weakness of his neighbors, so that in time they too might be able to see more clearly and come to repentance. After many years in the desert, Makarios was heard to say, Take no account of either the scorn of men or their praises, and you can be saved. The other fathers would say, Just as God protects the world, so Abba Makarios covers the faults which he saw, as though he did not see them, and those which he heard, as though he did not hear them. So let us, like Makarios, take up our cross and seek to be freed of the passions, so that we too may be able to look upon our neighbor with pure eyes and like a guileless child, reverence everyone we meet and find joy in the whole world.